You would think there were enough plants growing in Africa to get your mind spinning, but now there's one from West Africa called Ibogaine that sends users on a life-saving trip and gets them off hard drugs like heroin. Well, that's what some specialists and addicts claim, although a few people have died using it and it's banned in some states in America. Ruda reports. You don't feel any emotions, nothing. You don't care about anything. Your whole world around you changes. Anais Smith started taking drugs when she was 13. Five years later, she graduated to heroin. It's lovely. The feeling, it's, that's why it's difficult to leave. It's because of the feeling. When I wake up in the morning, that's all I think about is getting my shot. Mark Smith is 25. He has been using heroin for seven years, living on the streets for weeks at a time, unable to sustain relationships with his family, his partner, or his child. The power of, of heroin is, it's, I can't describe it to you. It's, it's got such a hold of me, you know. According to the Medical Research Council, there are an estimated 40,000 heroin addicts in South Africa. It is probably the most addictive of all the hard drugs, and very few people manage to kick the habit once they have started using it. It wreaks havoc in the lives of the users and their families. You do all the things you think you will not do, and all the people says heroin junkies do. Like what? Like stealing, you give anything away you got that's useful any jewelry, you beg the dealers for drugs. My kind was now the afgelopen maand, 14 days weg. I had the likes I was going to look to see if I could get cancer. And boy, I had to say, lose him. He can't, he's your kind. I found the people that I gave as a geschenk, I can't even be lose him. Mark's parents, Andrew and Marena, were desperate. Rehab centers had failed and they didn't know where to turn. Anae's mother, Anami, tried to get her daughter off the drug on her own. I had three days to try. That was night. She had her sick. She had her face on her head and her head on her head. She had her head on her head. That is a very good thing. Anae was out of control. She had to get her heroin fixed twice a day to ward off the terrible withdrawal symptoms. Your feet. Everything burns, pains, throwing up, getting sick, not moving because you're too tired, get too sore. Small wonder that when Anami heard about a new treatment for addiction which might hold out some hope for her daughter, she jumped at it. I had the man to call me. And he had to react to me. He had to call me to see that same day again. The man she had been referred to was pharmacist Charles Rousseau. He was working with an extract from a West African plant called Ibogaine. What led you to Ibogaine? A, f a family member that uh, committed suicide after using drugs and after messing up his whole life. And by chance I got across Ibogaine on the internet. And uh, the more I read about it, the more fascinated I became. Charles spent a year researching Ibogaine. He found that it came from the root of the Iboga plant in Gabon and had been used for centuries in what is called a rebirthing ceremony in that country. In the 60s, American addict Howard Lotsoff tried it, hoping for a psychedelic trip. I get home and uh, I, I lay down and um, the Ibogaine is working and working and working and working. And that's uh, 33 hours later and I only thought to myself, I'm exhausted, I'm going to sleep for a week, and I'm never going to take this drug again. And I got dressed, and I walked out of the house, and that's when I, I realized that I was not in narcotic withdrawal. And I looked at this large tree in front of me, and I looked at the clouds in the sky, and I realized that for the first time in my life, I was not frightened. Lotsov was unable to raise the funding for clinical research for this new discovery. Many years later, Dr. Deborah Mesh, a researcher at the University of Miami, heard reports about a wonder drug that promised relief from various addictions. I didn't believe it. I, I thought it was very unusual and I found it difficult to uh, comprehend that one drug, this sort of magic rainforest alkaloid, could have all these beneficial effects. But then she heard about another researcher who had been working with rats that were trained to become addicted. And he was describing, again, that a single dose of Ibogaine could make them stop taking the drugs. 
Dr. Mash was determined to take the research forward. The American Food and Drug Administration gave approval for clinical trials, but the pharmaceutical companies were not prepared to put up the $100 million it would cost. As a result, Ibogaine remains banned in the USA. We went offshore out to a Caribbean island where we had government approval to conduct research and treatments with patients who were willing to pay for the treatment, understanding that it was not FDA approved. And we collected over 400 treatment episodes and discovered that, in fact, that Ibogaine can be given safely and that it does have efficacy for heroin abusers, for alcoholics, and for psychostimulant abusers like cocaine and methamphetamine. What does this substance called Ibogaine actually do? Well, first of all, it appears to take away the almost unbearable withdrawal symptoms within an hour. Then it sends the patient on a hallucinatory trip during which life is reviewed in a kind of waking dream. And finally, it takes away the cravings for a number of weeks. The idea of using a substance that is unknown in South Africa, which will entail 36 hours of hallucinations, may be frightening. But Mark was prepared to step into this uncharted territory. He had nothing to lose. I'm really hoping this stuff works. Because if it doesn't, what then? I'm probably going to end up dead. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep on using it. But Alex Hamlin, who heads up the Houghton House Recovery Center, is concerned about the hallucinations that a person like Mark will have to endure. It's an intense uh, psychedelic experience, and there are certainly certain dangers associated with that. Uh, schizophrenic breakdown, psychotic episodes, um, you know, some, some permanent damage done by that kind of experience. Never seen it. If you've screened your patients first, You've, we've never had an adverse psychiatric event due to taking Ibogaine. The doctor, whoever your clinician is who comments on this is correct. You have to be very certain that this individual would be a good match to Ibogaine therapy. Because Ibogaine is so powerful and patients have not always been properly screened, there have been nine reported deaths internationally in the last 10 years. Charles insisted that Mark undergo a full medical checkup at a hospital in Pretoria. We are struggling to get a vein. They specifically looked at the liver, the kidneys, and the cardiovascular functions. Mark had no problems. The day after the checkup, he started his treatment. He would be Charles's 38th patient. He had taken his last heroin fix eight hours earlier and was starting to go into withdrawal. Basically, I'm, I'm sore at the moment. You know? I'm withdrawing at the moment. Um, so where? My, my body, my muscles are pain, and my joints. Charles carefully measured the amount of Ibogaine in accordance with Mark's body weight. First, a drink made of yogurt and fruit to keep down the nausea. It would be a long process, and Charles would keep a close eye on him every step of the way. In the meantime, Mark's parents could do nothing but wait. Uh, I just made him a part of it. As evening fell, the Ibogaine started kicking in. The first result was relief. Mark's withdrawal symptoms seemed to have gone completely. Mark, how are you feeling now as far as the withdrawals are concerned? Uh, much better. The pains, the pains have gone. I don't feel anything anymore now. Nothing? Nothing, nothing. No. <laughs> feel good? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, usually by now I would have gone mad, get a shot, you know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is yeah, this is wonderful actually. <laughs> In the midst of a high-filled rainstorm, Mark, feeling woozy, finally went to bed. Charles stayed with him, as did his father. To look at him, one would think that he was simply asleep, but there was much more happening. Anne, who went through this process last December, remembers it only too clearly. It's like I sat and watch myself, my own figure, myself, standing in fire with demons and machines and everything. Seriously, I stood in our watching our heaven and our actually crashes into each other. I wasn't scared or afraid, nothing. It's such a big trip, you don't want to trip anymore. And then when you woke up, what, what did it feel like? I woke up feeling all right, feeling like a new person. I totally feel like a newborn child. Withdrawal 